Seven weeks from today, just seven weeks from today, it's January 1, 2023. Hard to believe that. Seven weeks from today, we are in a new year. What are some of the tax tricks that you can do between now and then to best position yourself for this year and into the future. Well, that's what we're going to be talking about on this segment of the program. Welcome to Dollars and Cents, where we help you make sense out of all of life's decisions involving your dollars. One of Central Florida's longest running radio programs comes to you on a host of stations throughout the Central Florida region. Also happen to be one of the top 25 financial planning podcasts on the World Wide Web. So make sure you subscribe to us on your favorite podcast channel of choice along with our YouTube channel as well. My name is Joel Garris. I'm a certified financial planner, certified financial fiduciary at Nelson Financial Planning, where our team of certified financial fiduciary stands ready this week, Thanksgiving week even, to help you change your life with a successful and cost-effective financial plan. So what are some of those tricks that you can do between now and the end of the year to not just improve your tax situation but also for this year, but also perhaps lay the groundwork for greater tax efficiency in years to come? Well, uh, the first one would start with taking a look at your investment portfolio, and particularly in this particular case to really have a tax impact, you want to be looking at the after-tax, non-IRA, non-Roth, non-401k side of things. So with an after-tax account, that is money that you have put in, and ultimately, whatever the value is, that value is accessible at any point in time, And the only tax implications that you have on that, regardless of your age, is whether there's a gain or a loss. Well, because then you would have to pay taxes on the gain or on the loss, and here's the key concept, you would be able to use that as a write-off on your tax return. Well, I know this may be breaking news, but the year so far in the markets has not been particularly great. So one of the things that you may want to do, particularly on those after-tax accounts, is take a look and see, do I have any losses here? Is the value of this lower than the money that I put into it? Because the other thing that you want to probably take a look at is just make sure that the investments that you own, particularly if you own mutual funds, aren't generating or paying out a capital gain of any kind in the month of December. Now, that would be very rare to see that because of the performance in the market. But ultimately, to the extent any funds have sort of repositioned different holdings, then that could certainly have generated a gain that then gets passed proportionally on to all of the shareholders of that particular fund. So you could be looking at a situation where I lost money, uh, I've got less than what I put in, and I'm about ready to then get hit with a capital gain during the month of December. At this point in the calendar, uh, any of those fund companies, any of those investment managers certainly should be putting out approximate amounts of what those capital gain distributions should be. So it'd be easy to kind of find out that piece of information. And so you might want to shift out of that fund, avoid what could be a potential capital gain distribution, number one. But more importantly, you are able to then take that paper loss and convert it to a realized tax loss that you can use on your tax return to offset capital gains. Now, Capital losses can be used to offset capital gains in their entirety. An extra 3,000 of those capital losses can also be used to offset other income, work income, for example. Beyond that, 
The losses, well, the good news is you don't lose them in a particular tax year if you don't use them. You get to carry them forward to future years. So just be aware that you can do that. And that may be a tax saving strategy that not only you could do for this year, that would certainly help, but also because you're able to carry those capital losses forward, then you're able to have that for future years as well. So certainly something to think about in terms of that investment portfolio, looking at the after-tax side of things. One caveat on that, you don't necessarily want to buy back into the same fund that you sold within a 30 calendar day period. Otherwise, it's treated as a wash sale and you don't get to take that loss as a write-off. So just be aware that there are some nuances there, but certainly something worth looking at in terms of your investment portfolio. And at the end of the day, is there a way to take those losses and generate them so that you'll have them on your tax return for this year. And to the extent that there are more, then you can carry them forward and help to reduce your taxes in future years as well. Number two, uh, I mean, obviously, this is a, a very popular activity between now and the end of the year. A lot of people do a lot of their charitable giving. Uh, certainly, uh, that charitable giving winds up being potentially a tax deduction for this year. Now, a couple of things to remember. There, they You were, for the previous two years, getting sort of above-the-line write-off on charitable contributions, $300 as, sing, as a single person, $600 as a couple. That was an additional deduction for charitable giving that you were getting that was you were eligible to take regardless of whether you were itemizing or not. Unfortunately, for the year 2022... Psh- that's gone away. So in order to have your charitable deductions or charitable contributions actually contribute to reducing down your tax bill, you have to look at itemizing your deductions. Well, with the standard deduction as high as it is, I think it's right around, what's it going to, 27, 28,000 for a married couple, then you've got to get above that threshold in order to have your charitable contributions actually directly reduce your tax bill. So understand charitable giving, it's certainly something that a lot of folks do as you get to the end of the year, but sometimes the tax implications can be quite limited. And in particular this year with the elimination of that extra ability to deduct a charitable deduction without having uh, to itemize, uh, those become more limited across the board. Uh, the reality is that though that there are some tricks to sort of maximize the tax efficiency on those charitable giving. Uh, one option is that if you do have a, an investment that has a gain, you could give the investment itself to the charity and uh, then avoid the gain, but get the full value of that charitable gift as a write-off. Similarly, what you could also do is if it is a loss, like we were talking about earlier, you would sell that first, you get the loss on your personal return, and then give the resulting cash proceeds to the charity. So one of the things that we would sort of underscore there is make sure that you're looking at how to give to charity to the extent you're doing that between now and the end of the year in as tax efficient way as possible. One of the most tax efficient ways to do that is that if you are getting a required minimum distribution from your retirement account, don't forget about the qualified charitable distribution. Folks, this one is huge. We've been talking about it for years, ever since it first became an option for folks that are taking their required minimum distribution. If you have part of that required minimum distribution or all of it, as much as you want, go directly to a charity. And there's the key key concept. Don't give it to yourself first and then you write a check to the charity. It won't work that way. If you have that required minimum distribution, go directly payable to the charity. Then instead of having to claim your required minimum distribution, whatever the amount that you gave to charity you don't have to claim as income, regardless of whether you are itemizing your deductions or not. So pretty powerful concept in terms of that qualified charitable distribution. And certainly those are the kinds of things uh, that we see a lot of, particularly at the end of the year, people finishing up their required minimum distribution, also finishing up their charitable contributions. I'll tell you, those that qualified charitable distribution really mirrors together very, very well uh, to allow folks to be incredibly 
tax efficient. Uh, likewise, we've got a few other things as well uh, to talk about uh, some tax moves that you can make between now and the end of the year that will help save you on your taxes this year and reduce potentially your tax liability going forward. The next one we're going to talk about after the break won't help you save this year, but will help you save in the future. Coming up next here on Dollars and Cents with Joel Garris of Nelson Financial Planning. <laughs> 